Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about how I deal with blight when I get blight. There's a couple ways that I deal with it, and it kind of depends on the time of the year that I get the blight, whether it's early blight or late blight. That doesn't really matter, but the time of the year matters because it's going to take time for the whole plant to recover. So there's two ways that I really deal with blight when I get blight on my tomatoes. Okay, as you can see here, I'm getting either late blight or early blight. I think this is the late blight. It can't, it's been so wet, it just fired everything up. No, I don't have mulch, and it's probably, well, I don't know. I can't really necessarily, this is a lot of this is old soil, so it may have been in there as well. But even in my back garden, all the way down there, it has blight even down there where it's virgin earth and everything. So it got blight even down there. Because the blight gets up in the air and then it travels through the air that way and once it just once it's airborne it's like there's really not much you can do about that when you get blight so there's the two ways i deal with blight is if it's early enough in the year the early blight comes in say june uh coming into july uh what i'll generally do is i'll strip all the leaves off the plant except for the very top part of the plant and I'll leave like if there's any suckers coming out I leave the suckers with the leaves on and providing they don't have blight and I'll pretty much strip everything down to the bone then I wait for the plant to start putting you know more growth into the suckers and everything and when I see that the growth is doing good then I'll start to feed it with a little bit of fertilizer and Epsom salt that's about it you know I mean that, that you just need to get it going again and then that that's one way to deal with it and a lot of times the plant if the plant is three four feet tall already uh, a lot of times it'll recover quite quickly and very healthy too and the blight will come back because it's in the air remember it's not just on the soil a lot of people tell you it's just on the soil it's not just on the soil it's, it's in the air as well like my cat could rub up against something and then go in my greenhouse and spread blight all over the green there's no 100 percent pure way to totally avoid it unless you grew your tomato plants in a lab so generally the second way i deal with blight is i simply just leave it alone and the reason why i do that if i start pulling these leaves off this plant that exposed part of the plant like if i snap that off it gets inside the stem of this plant and it spreads to the entire plant extremely rapidly so even plucking a couple leaves off a lot of times will spread it even worse than if you just left it alone there's really not much you can do with blight a lot of people tell you yeah use baking soda every time i've ever used baking soda it's burned the plant down it burns the leaves off whether i do it in the night time or i do it in the morning it just I've never had luck using baking soda. It just burns the leaves. There's actually a, a third way to, there's a third way that I deal with it. And basically the third way I kind of deal with it. It's not really, it's more of prevention rather than dealing with it once you already have it. The third way I deal with it is I spread lime on a surface of the soil, regular garden lime. That's, it's going to be alkalized. It's going to be generally a little alkaline. And I'll put the lime all over the leaves of my lower plants. And I'll spread that on there before the blight actually gets on the leaves. So most likely the blight is already on the leaves. You just don't see it yet. It takes a little time for those spots to show up. But I'll, I'll, I'll dust the very bottom leaves, the very one foot high, all the way down. I dust them with, with lime. And I coat the surface of the ground with lime and so on and so on. So I, everything's got a dusting of lime. The lime does not burn the tomato leaves. It doesn't do anything like that. It just makes the very surface of the plant very alkali, and it, it the, the blight has a really hard time of getting on it with the, with the lime. It will get on there eventually because the rain is gonna wash it off, and you can't keep adding lime because it's gonna make your soil too alkali below it because it washes down. So too much, you can't keep doing it, but if you use the lime early in the season and you spread and your plants are tall enough and you can spread it about a foot above the ground, mulch the bottom and then lime the, the soil before you mulch, lime the soil, light, light dusting all over the surface of the soil. Then put your, your mulch down and then take the lime and dust the whole one foot high. It, you go a little higher if you want, it's not gonna hurt. It doesn't hurt the plants. I do it all the time, but that's how 
I kind of prevent Lyme. I didn't do it this year because I didn't see any any blight. I should have. And then like a week later, it went from like zero blight to like completely blighted, almost killed all the plants. So it came in so fast because of the rain that we've been getting. I mean, in July, I got nine inches of rain. And so far this month, it's up to three inches of rain. And we're only six days into the month. So it's just been very rainy. And when it's very rainy like that, there's not a whole lot you can do, guys. I mean, it, the diseases that are coming out because of the excess rain is just reaping havoc on my tomato plants. So that's really the way I deal with tomato blight. I just leave it alone if you, if you start. And don't handle your plants. That's another thing, too. When, when, you're, when you're growing tomatoes, don't keep putting your hands on the tomato plants. Don't, don't leave your hands off it. Do not touch the tomato plants unless you have to. And the reason why I say that is because your tomato plant has to make these resin glands on there called trichomes. They build up these terpene oils on the surface of the plant and that's called tomato tar and if the t if the plant can build up enough of that tomato tar onto the stem of the plant it doesn't care about the leaves it'll throw out new leaves in, in you know weeks within a week's time it'll start putting out new leaves tomato tar protects the, the main stem of the plant and that's the most important part of the plant because that's where the blight gets so if you could just not touch the plant and let those resin glands fully develop and so it can develop the tomato tar you're going to have very resilient plants now these plants you see here are all really really in bad shape right now because they're all getting hit with, with what is known as tomato will and there's three different kinds of tomato will there's viral bacterial and fungal and i don't know which one it is and there's no cure for it most you know articles on tomato wilt just tell you to destroy the plant and burn the soil and everything because it's that bad of a disease tomato wilt is one of the worst things you can get but this 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 video is about the the blight i don't want to i don't want to digress too much but that's generally what i do when i get blight i know sometimes it, it doesn't work and the blight really gets out of control and when that happens it wipes the plant out within a week your plant is dead it can spread that fast so it's better off it just does that than you sitting there wasting your time with baking soda, wetting the top of the leaf and the bottom of the leaf. You're never going to, you're just wasting your time. So that's the way I normally deal with it. You know, I'll spread the lime and, and hope for the best. Uh, I have been lucky where I've almost didn't get any blight at some seasons because of that little practice I do. You know, just leave it alone. Just don't go in there and start pulling leaves because when you pull a leaf, and you expose that juice and that blight is all over your hands now it's on the leaf and it gets inside that wound and it gets inside the plant and when it's inside the plant it's over there's nothing you can do externally and internally just leave it alone because if it's inside the plant your plants destined to die now if you leave it alone at least you might get a couple tomatoes out of it you know what I mean but if you start messing with it it's gonna get worse so all right, so that's that's how I deal with with tomato blight. If you got any questions, just leave a comment below, and I'll do my best to answer them. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care.